In this video, we will investigate what to actually lock in a log file. What do we write in a log file? There are many options for that. So, at least three different options can be identified. On the one hand, the one extreme is called physical logging. So what is physical logging? Here you keep the states, the byte images of your store. And you can identify a before image and an after image. So let's start with an example. Let's assume you have a page 42. It has certain entries, certain terms from photography. And you want to change something here. So you change the spelling of this word to the correct spelling from KE to CA. How do you reflect that in the log entry in the log record? You write, you write out one log record. That is one log record. One log record only here. And this says, okay, the log record affects page 42. And you keep the image of the region that is different as of before the change and as of after the change. So we have the before image contains the state before the change was performed. What is the before image in this context? Those are those two characters, the K and the E. What is the after image? Those are those two characters, the C and the A. So what we say here is, well, the image that is being recorded here starts at offset 367. So this is the offset within page 42. That's this number here. The two is the length. Length. Yeah, and then before we record this information, KE, and after it is CA. That is a physical log record, a physical entry. This is also called the this is also called the redo information. This is the redo information. Because this allows us to redo the change. If we lose the actual change done in the page due to uh, power failure or whatever, and then lo look at the log record, then we can replay the change. Then we understand, aha, now we take an old version of page 42, we just apply this thing here at offset 367, and then we are back to the current state. In contrast, this is called the undo information. This is the undo information. Undo information. Okay. So that is all the information we have. And notice um, that this is with respect to a particular page and on that page with respect to a particular offset. And then here you, of course, typically keep a byte sequence. Read the byte image as of before and as of after the change. Well, another extreme in logging is called logical logging. That's a high level logging. And here you don't keep a log entry with respect to pages. But typically it's on a higher level. You say something like this. So if you assume that the entries you have on the page here belong to a particular table, let's assume it's a table called camera lingo collecting terms used in photography. Then here you have a primary key and then you have the entry with that. So it's basically a dictionary of terms. And that is the contents of that table. So what you keep in the log are not changes applied to the particular pages, 42 or whatever page, you just keep the high level information that the entry for primary key zero was updated. It was updated from camera to camera yeah, with a different spelling. Yeah? Before it was this and now it was changed to camera. That is the information you keep in a logical log entry. So notice that we do not have any information about a particular page here yet. This implies that if you replay it, replaying the action done in the log record may be done using a different page. It may not necessarily be page 42. Yeah. When we write out the log record, maybe it's still page 42. Yeah. But later on, if we recover and use a log entry, maybe this change is replayed on a different page. So there's no connection to a particular page here. It's really a high level log record. Then this is called logical logging. And another important feature of this is this is not necessarily limited to a single page. The physical log entry here is always with respect to a single page. Logical logging is not. And if 
And this also has a problem because, or a problem you should be aware of when implementing logical logging, that is, if the high-level information records a change that affects multiple pages, well, you better be careful. Let's assume you have a couple of pages. So let's make another example of what the problem is. Non-transactional problem. Assume you have a high-level update information where you, for whatever, change all of those entries to capital, to start with a capital character, and you record that in one logical log entry. So you have a log entry that is something like change to capital. Yeah, so all of those words should be changed to start with a capital spelling. And of course, if the table is big enough, it will be collected over multiple pages. So this means the change recorded on this logical log entry affects multiple pages. Pages, say, 42, 57, and 85. And that may lead to a problem during recovery because during recovery then you must make sure that when replaying the action recorded in such a log entry is really applied to all of those pages. And the log entry basically becomes kind of a transaction. You could say a change performed on a single page is like a single change operation, like a single insert command in a database. A log entry affecting multiple pages is like a transaction. And then you have transactional properties and then you have kind of asset and durability properties on the level of log records. Well, it's a longer story, but it's a problem you should be aware of when handling these kind of log entries. They are more difficult to handle and they require extra care. But for the moment, simply keep in mind, logical logging is a variant of logging that's not restricted to a particular page and it keeps the change information on a high level, typically with respect to tables or any other high level structure. There's a method in between the two extremes, physical logging and logical logging, and that's called physiological logging. So it, this is similar to logical logging, but it is restricted to a single page. As in logical logging, if we go back, here we had the change with respect to a table a high level structure in the database, which may span multiple pages. In physiological logging, we also record the high level information. However, it is restricted to a particular database page. Yeah, so it's a mix of the two words. We have a physical concept here, we keep in the log record. However, then here we have this change recorded as a high level information. And if you go back to this problematic case, here I try to sketch that. Now assume you have a log entry where you change all of the terms to start with a capital character and this affects three pages. So what would you do in physiological logging? In physiological logging, you would have to write three different log records. So in this example, example, for capital characters, let's write it down, characters, you would have to write three log records, three physiological log records, basically the same high level information, now, however you keep that high level information that you change to a capital character in the beginning, but it's three records because always page 42 and then the high level information, then page 57, high level information, page 85, high level information. That's what you would have to do in physiological logging. So those are the three most important variants in logging. Now we need to make a decision. Which logging variant are we going to use? Well, and that depends how, which logging variant to use depends heavily on whether it's a main memory system or whether it's a disk-based database system. If you have a disk-based database system, you basically have the following trade-off. We have on the horizontal axis the size of our log file. And this roughly corresponds to the I.O. time to read the log. Well, the log is organized sequentially. We just append to the log. And now if we read it, it's basically the sequential read I.O. time we have to spend for that. So the size of the log corresponds 
to that is uh, correlates strongly to the I/O time for reading that log. On the other axis, we have the log entry processing time. So what does that mean? Log entry processing time is the time um, we need to spend to reapply those changes. So if you have a change like that, assume logical logging, and this change affects here one page, but this affects three pages, we have to factor in the time it takes to actually replay those changes on the database store. And of course, in a disk-based systems, that may take a while. If you have a transaction that's being logged here in your log file, and then you replay all the actions done by the transaction, maybe you have to load a couple of pages, you have to write, you have to write them back to the store. That may take a while. So in a disk-based system, you typically have the following trade-offs. If you do physical logging, you get a relatively big log file. However, applying the changes recorded in physical log records is relatively cheap. You don't have to do so much for that. Maybe you have to load some, load some database pages, but there's no high level thing you have to do here. Physiological logging is already more expensive while reapplying because it's just the logical information. Still, it's just per page. You have to load the corresponding pages and write them back as in physical logging, but it's a high level information. So it's a little more overhead in finding out where exactly has that change to be applied on that page, yeah, which is already precisely re recorded in physical logging. Here, there's this logical aspect where you still have to find out it costs a little more. However, it's likely that the physiological log is also somewhat smaller. So the sequential read time is better. And physical logging in the worst case, of course, you could have an after image and a before image spanning the entire page. If the change of a page is something like that, your page 42 is changed in each and every place. So everything is changed. Yeah? Then the before image is the entire page and the after image is the entire page in the new version, which is, well, a lot of information to store. And if the logical information is shorter, then of course you gain something. If you do logical logging in the sense you store logical operations like inserts, deletes on particular tables. Let's write it down, e.g. Uh, inserts, deletes to tables. Then you are getting even better with respect to the size of the log, but again, replaying that, re-executing those high-level operations is more expensive than a physiological replay. And again, if you have a full logical logging in the sense you just keep the transaction, you write the entire transaction. In the extreme case, you could say, whatever SQL query comes in, you write the SQL query to your log, and then when replaying, you just re-execute your SQL query that's a very high level way of logical logging. It leads to small log files. However, the effort for executing that in a disk-based system is very high. So in general, you get a trade-off like that. So for a disk-based system, typically we are in this space somehow. In this space doing physiological and physical logging. Those are the log records that are often used. For a special case, we will revisit later on, there's also some logical logging going on. So the variant of logging I will introduce in follow-up videos does all of that, actually all of these three, but most of the records are with respect to those. So what happens in the main memory system? The main memory system has a different trade-off. And this is because, well, if you execute a transaction in the main memory system, that's a way different performance we get. Uh, in the disk-based systems, it's typically on the order of minutes. So the trade-off is different. These times go down to the order of milliseconds. The execution times are so close to one, one another that the overall recovery process will become dominated by the actual reading time for the log. So in such a scenario in the main memory system, it makes sense to move in the direction of a more logical oriented log record. Yeah? So one variant is to lock the high level transactions in log records rather than individual changes applied to pages. This is a good deal in the main memory system, not so much in a disk based system. And here's a concrete example on how this could be done. So this is how logical logging could be performed in the main memory system. One idea is you apply dictionary compression again. Dictionary compression, we had a separate video on that. What is the idea? 
you keep a query dictionary. So if you have a query coming in into your system, what you do is you put that in a dictionary. And of course, that dictionary should also be written to the log eventually. But what you do is the first time you see a query pattern, by query pattern, I mean you take the query and remove the constants by variables. So here I say uh, term is variable A, term is variable, variable B. I don't keep the constant. I parameterize the queries and then I put that into the dictionary for each and every query pattern. You see you do that. And now whenever such a query comes in, you simply write a log entry as follows. Here we have three log entries. And this log entry should be read as uh -huh, delete from camera lingo where term equals lens. So those are simply the parameters that are kept in the log record. And of course, these log re records are super small. They can be read very quickly from disk. Of course, we have to persist those log en uh, entries, even though this is called a main memory database system. But stable storage has to be persistent. So the log is still on disk. And um, I can keep those entries like that. So here this is read like, okay, this is query zero. Here I have this pattern. I need to replace A by camera and B by this spelling of camera and so forth. And that is how you could organize a log like that. Of course, what you should do in such a logging scenario is that every time you insert a new entry into your query dictionary, you also force it into the log. Otherwise, you won't be able to get back to those entries. So you also should lock changes to this table into your log. Of course, otherwise this is not going to work. But on a high level, this is a very efficient way of logging in a main memory database system. And this is an extreme example of logical logging using dictionary compression. So this is logical logging, logical logging plus dictionary compression, dictionary of queries, dictionary compression. Okay, so much about the different logging variants. If you liked this video, don't forget to hit the like button. Thank you. So if you want to see more database videos, be it in English or in German, take a look at my website datenbankenlernen.de. It has a couple of English and German videos. You can also subscribe to my YouTube channel, Jens Did, or you look at our website, infosys.uni-saarland.de. See you there.